So, hello and welcome to lesson 4 in our study of functional analysis. So, in lesson 4, we'll be talking about norms. Norms, okay. So, we get a concept of norms by trying to induce a metric on a vector space. So, know that in our second lesson, we talked about metric spaces. In our third video, we talked about vector spaces. So, now, we are just combining those two concepts. So, inducing a metric on a vector space. You know, we said a metric helps us to find the distance between points, right, in a set, right, in a topological space. Okay, so when we have a vector space, we would want to find the distance. Okay, but before we do that, we want to make sure that. That distance should preserve translation and preserve scaling. So most of the time, to induce a metric on a vector space, we always want a metric, which is translation invariant. That it, it preserves translation, and which is also absolutely homogeneous. That is, it preserves scaling. Okay. So when we have a metric, which has these properties, then we can induce that metric on a vector space. And this introduces us to norms, okay? So because norm is simply an absolutely homogeneous translation invariant metric. So we are saying that to induce a metric on a vector space, you want a metric which is translation invariant and absolutely homogeneous. And that metric is what we call the norm, okay? So that's the reason why you find the norm of vectors. You can even extend it to matrices. Okay, so um, definition. A norm is an absolutely homogeneous translation invariant metric. So you should know. And we can also take a second definition, all right? And mostly this is the important one. So it has some properties. So it says, a norm on a vector space X is a row-valued function on whose value at an... So at any vector in X is denoted by so there is a vector that we are finding for the norm and we denote it by two bars okay so read as the norm of what X okay and it has the following properties so before it can be called the norm of X it has satisfied these properties so the norm of X is always greater than or equal to zero not the same as saying the distance between x to y is greater than or equal to zero. So you can see that the definition of norms are motivated by the definition for metric spaces. And the norm of a vector x is zero if only x is a zero vector. If you remember, we said the distance between x and y is zero if and only if x is equal to y. Then we are saying that if you have um a vector being multiplied by a scalar and you are finding for the norm of it is given by the absolute value of the scalar times the norm of x okay and this is what we call the absolute homogeneity then the last property is what we call the triangle inequality or the sub addictivity okay so these four properties have to be satisfied so here note that x and y arbitrary vectors in x and alpha is in this scalar so a norm satisfies these four properties so a norm on x defines a metric d on x which is given by so, and it's called the metric induced by the norm so the norm space just defined is denoted by what we can see here or simply x okay so this was something for you to note so now the defining properties n1 to n4 of a norm are suggested and motivated by the length of a vector s in elementary vector algebra. So that in this case, we can write this to the norm of x as the distance of x. Okay. So in fact, n1, you know, n1 is the first property. There's it. And this n2, this n3, this n4. So you can refer from those places. So, in fact, N1 and N2 state that all vectors have positive length 
except the zero vector which has length zero hope you understand n3 means that when a vector is multiplied by a scalar its length is multiplied by the absolute value of the scalar and n4 is illustrated in um this figure that i will show you okay and what that means is that the length of one side of a triangle cannot exceed the sum of the two lengths of the two other sides okay so the n4 is a triangle inequality or the subadditivity okay so we are going to show that prove that so proof of the triangle inequality so you see we have a triangle here and we have three sides the first side is x the second side is y the third side is x plus y okay so when you find the distance between the norm of those um, points, those we can term them those vectors. Okay, you realize that always the norm here will always be less than or equal to this and this. Okay, and that happens to be the proof of the triangle inequality. And you see what it means is that the length of one side of a triangle cannot exceed the sum of the length of the two sides of the other two sides okay so this is one side the length of it cannot exceed the sum of these two that's why it's always less than or equal to it okay so this is a simple proof to it and there is a second proof which is the cauchy what inequality okay so um let me just walk you through that one to be able to show that this is true okay that's a triangle inequality Okay, so we consider the norm of x plus y squared, which is written as x plus y dot x plus y. And therefore, this is the same as x plus y squared. Now, the norm of x plus y squared is equal to the norm of x squared plus twice the dot um, x dot y so x dot y okay then plus the norm of y squared and when you get here you want to do something small to this okay so by the calculus was inequality it says that x dot y is less than or equal to the norm of x dot the norm of y okay so you know from here we have this right so we try to apply the because this was inequality, then we can write this as this. So it being less than or equal to the norm of x squared plus twice the norm of x dot, the norm of y plus the norm of y squared, right? And, you know, it's like in math when you have something like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is the same as a plus b all squared. Okay, so this year, this year is, is the same as what we can see here, and so now we have this right, which we just showed. And when you find the square root on both sides, we are going to get this, which is the triangle inequality. So we've been able to also show that using the Cauchy's first inequality. So let's take a look at. The last thing we are going to do in this video so we are going to show that the triangle inequality implies the reverse triangle inequality or is equivalent to the reverse triangle inequality so this is the reverse triangle inequality so we want to show that this think this should be x and this should be y so we want to show that this is equivalent to this okay so let's go through the solution so from the triangle inequality we have this which we are all aware of okay so we let x be equal to x minus y and we put that in this we are calling equation a so where you find x here we will put x minus y so doing that gives us this you see here this and this cancel you get the norm of x less than or equal to the norm of x minus y plus the norm of y and we can bring this one here we get the norm of x minus the norm of y 
less than or equal to the norm of x minus y. And we call this equation 1. Then we come back to this same equation. But this time around, we make y to be y minus x and we put that in a. Then wherever you find y, you put y minus x there. So this will be the norm of x plus y minus x is less than or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y minus x. Okay. Then you can see this and this will go away. So we can have the norm of y be less than or equal to the norm of x plus the norm of y minus x. Okay. And when we play around this, this is the same as the norm of x minus y is greater than or equal to negative the norm of x minus y. We call this equation 2. I think this is the same as what we can see here. So combining equation 1 here, right, in equation 2 here, will give us minus, so you can see we have minus the norm of x minus y less than or equal to this and from equation um, 1 this here is less than or equal to this so that's the reason why I'm combining equation 1 and 2 gives us this hope you can see that okay and you know when you have something like the absolute value of x less than r is the same as this right then when you have minus r less than or equal to x less than or equal to r is the same as absolute value of x less than or equal to r so that means what we can see here is the same as absolute value of the norm of x minus the norm of y less than or equal to the norm of x minus y and hence we've been able to show that the triangle inequality or the sub additivity is equivalent to this that's a triangle the reverse triangle inequality okay which has been shown so that's all what we want to do in this video so we'll continue it with other concepts and see you in the next video